Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Solo Wargaming Show. So today we're going to do something different. We're going to do a top 10 list of what to buy when you absolutely positively cannot buy any more miniatures. Now I think uh, one of the things I'm slowly becoming known for on YouTube is I'm kind of the guy that's always encouraging you to get all those miniatures painted and get on with the hobby. So whether it's me doing 100 miniature painting challenges or whether it's me getting rid of three miniatures for every one miniature I buy or whether it's me doing shows called After Painting and what hobby life looks like when you have painted up all your miniatures, I uh, am relentlessly attacking all of the piles of shame uh, sitting in all of our hobby closets. And so that is, uh, this is another quiver in my arrow. And this is going to be the top 10 things to buy when you absolutely, positively cannot buy another miniature. So let's get started. Number 10, take out a subscription to a loot box or other type of miniature service. Now, the one you're looking at here is called the Savage Mini Crate. This is by uh, Privateer Press. Uh, now, obviously, in a lot of these loot boxes, some of the prime items you will get is a miniature. But the difference is you are getting one miniature every month, typically. Uh, so at the end of the year, you're going to have no more than 12 miniatures. So simply taking some of those hobby dollars and saying, instead of putting in this order, I'm just going to put this money aside, have it taken out, and I'll get my one miniature every month. It's sort of like putting yourself on a a quota or uh, putting a cap on your purchases. Number nine, take out a magazine subscription. Now, two of my favorite magazines are War Games Illustrated and Miniature War Games, as well as War Games Soldiers and Strategy, but I just wanted to show two here. The great thing about a, a magazine, uh, whether you take out a subscription or if you can get them uh, at your retailer, uh, like some of these are carried by your hobby store retailer is you can you can literally take in other parts of the hobby without actually having to spend money on it. And nowadays, these magazines are really desperately trying to uh, get your hobby dollar, compete more for your hobby dollar. So they are including free rules. They are including terrain, and even some of them are including a miniature or two. So again, it kind of it will kind of uh, satisfy your fix. You might get a small sprue or something, but you're limiting how the miniatures are coming in. So you're not spending the money on the miniature. You're spending the money on a magazine. And the magazine just happens to include a miniature. So, but again, the whole object is to kind of slow down that that roll. You know, of more and more miniatures that, that snowballs on us by the end of the year. Number eight is look into a role playing game. So this is especially if you are a tabletop gamer or a miniature gamer. Uh, maybe you have never tried role playing games because you're not into sword and sorceries. You're not into, you know, magic. Or, you know, maybe, you know, like me, you don't like games because of some of the content, you know, whether it's demons or undead or anything that might offend you or your sensibilities. There are role playing games that have none of those elements in there. So, for example, The Traveler is considered probably the best uh, sci fi role playing game out there. It's kind of like uh, Firefly. Uh, the movie or the TV show. There's also uh, World War II role playing games. There is a. Uh, there are spy role playing games. If you want to play James Bond, there are gangster role playing games. If you want to play in the era of prohibition, so maybe you can find a way to take all those miniatures you've purchased over the years and repurpose them, you know, in a suitable role playing game. That brings us to number seven. Number seven is a board game. Now, most of you probably buy board games anyway, so I don't have to tell you, you know, exactly what a board game is. But, for example, nowadays, many of the board games include a lot of miniatures that you don't have to paint. 
Or a lot of times they include components that are basically miniature. So like Axis and Allies, you get tanks and ships and things that, you know, you probably wouldn't use in a miniature game. But they're, they're real nice for the game itself. And in a pinch, you can use them. So say you get the magazine subscription. And like the last issue, there was some free rules for Victory at Sea. Well, if you don't want to buy the miniatures, but you have the Axis and Allies game, you can put together some fleets of ships and carriers and planes, and you can play the game using the components from your board game. So start taking a look at maybe you will repurpose more dollars into board games. And so board games do tend to cost more than a blister of miniatures. So that way, instead of going to your hobby shop every week, spending $25 on blisters or a pack of miniatures, maybe you will save up those $25 and at the end of the month, you will buy yourself a $100 board game like A Song of Ice and Fire, which is packed full of miniatures. (laughs) Number six. A gaming table. Now, this is obviously if you just have a whole bunch of money. So if you're the type of person where you back three or four Kickstarters a month at $100 because you're going to get this miniature and this 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 set of miniatures. And uh, if you're the type of person that, you know, say you spend on Games Workshop and you're buying boxes and ships and attack planes, you know, at 80 or or $100 a box, maybe it's time to invest some of that money again you save it and get yourself a real nice exclusive board gaming table if you can't afford an actual table because they can run about a thousand bucks which might be your annual budget then what about a topper typically you can get a topper for two or three hundred bucks and you know if push comes to shove you know create your own board you know set some money aside build some supplies heck hire somebody you know, look in the paper, go on the yellow pages, call a contractor, show them some pictures of what you want and say, hey, how much would you cost me to build this? And what's the most affordable materials you could build it with? You would be surprised. A lot of these contractors will say, hey, it would take me, you know, three hours to build that. I charge a hundred bucks an hour and you're looking at, you know, two hundred and fifty dollars in supplies. But if you get the table of your dreams it may be worth it. And, and what is that? 550 bucks? What is that? Uh, two months worth of your gaming supplies? And that brings us to number five. Buy more gaming supplies and hobby supplies. So we all are always replacing a hobby knife here or we're replacing our uh, some more glue or some more paint. Well, what I'm talking about here is decide every month That instead of buying my miniatures this month, again, let's go back to that $25 a week. Decide you are going to turn over your entire hobby supply. So instead of using that one hobby knife, you are now going to buy a hobby knife set that has five or six blades, five or six handles. Maybe you are going to buy a whole different range of uh, super glues, right? So that you've heard this glue is, does works with this and this one works with that. So you decide that month you're going to buy super glue. So you're going to buy a whole paint kit. So instead of having to buy one paint here and one paint there, you decide this month instead of buying miniatures, I'm going to spend 80 bucks and I'm going to get this entire paint kit, right? So look at hobby supplies in twos. If nothing else, you know, you can maybe set aside two or three months where each month you're just going to replenish your hobby supplies and then see where you are at. That brings us to number four. So if you can't actually buy miniatures as in miniature figures, then look at miniature vehicles, right? Because one of the things is, you know, when it comes to miniatures, our biggest source of angst is how many we have. You buy a box of Oathmark and you've got 40 more guys. You buy a box of Boat Action, 8th Army, and you've got 40 more guys. And before you know it, at the end of the month, you know, you've got 300 more miniatures. Well, if you start buying vehicles instead of guys, you can slow that down quicker. So if you play a game like Spectre Operations, you can buy some of the Special Forces vehicles for maybe 40, 50 bucks. 
which is the same thing a box of some of those miniatures will run you, but it's only one vehicle. If you're a fantasy guy, buy some siege equipment. How many of us have went to a convention and seen all of the wonderful siege equipment laid out and said, boy, I wish I could afford that. Well, in reality, you could afford it if you bought less miniatures. And that brings us to number three. The whole reason we're supposed to be buying these miniatures is to play miniature games. So why don't you buy more rules? If you have a set of rules in your home and you have not updated them recently, maybe it's time to go through and start buying the second edition. So you have games like Sword Point, which is an ancient and medieval warfare game that has recently come out with a second edition. You have fantasy games like Frostgrave, which have recently come out with a second edition. If you have all the second editions, maybe you can buy some rules for that other genre or that other period, right? If you have been thinking about getting into Prohibition area, buy the rules. You don't have to have the miniatures yet. Just buy the rules, right? And if you have been thinking of doing Napoleonics, You know, buy you a set of war game rules that works well for Napoleonics. And the thing is, if you're buying the rules as opposed to the miniatures first, well, then you're going to have an opportunity to read the rules to see if you like the rules. Right. And you can play out different versions of the rules using any figures. Right. If you want to play a Napoleonic game and see how the units form up and fight, it doesn't matter if you're using medieval guys. You're just testing out the rules. Same thing with a Prohibition era. If you want to take some World War II partisans and play a Prohibition era game, who, who's to say, you know, oh my God, you're, you're not doing that right. And if you didn't like the rules, okay, then down the road you'll pick up the miniatures, but maybe you'll get rid of some of your other miniatures in exchange. But buying rules is actually a great way to kind of slow down on simply buying miniatures number two is gaming mats now this is kind of one of my favorite things that is kind of a newer trend in the hobby is that high quality uh gaming mats most of these are kind of made of a uh mouse material so that uh they're very durable and you have all kinds of themes from post-apocalyptic to ruined world war ii cities to frosty uh, landscapes, to uh, town and countries and open plains and whatever. I got my first one this year, my first actual gaming mat, and I really love it. I haven't, it hasn't showed up on the TV because I mean on the YouTube because I'm saving it for just the right scenario, but I'm already thinking of buying some other ones. And you know, at about thirty to forty-five dollars each, uh, they're not cheap. But if I'm not buying miniatures, then I can pick up one mat every month so that hopefully after six months or so, I've got six different landscapes and six different uh, mats and maybe different sizes. And now I can actually use a lot of these miniatures I got without having to actually make a bunch of terrain every time I want to bring them out. And speaking of terrain... That brings us to our number one thing to buy when you absolutely, positively cannot buy any more miniatures. Pick up more terrain. We have probably more choice in terrain nowadays than we actually do in miniatures. I mean, if you really think about it, almost all the miniatures that could be made have been made. Everything from He-Man and the Masters of the Universe to Conan to the Princess Bride. If you can think of a miniature, it has either been made, it is being made, it is coming out. So the one area now where we are seeing things that we have not had an opportunity to see or get before is terrain. Whether it is MDF terrain, whether it is resin terrain, whether it is plastic terrain. You know, the selection nowadays in terrain from companies like Foreground and Sarissa Precision is unparalleled and the thing about uh, a terrain collection is you're probably not going to be able to buy everything at once you're probably not going to be able to buy the most expensive things right off the bat but if you put it into your monthly uh, purchase queue 
right? You bump some miniatures out of the queue. You throw terrain pieces in there. Within three or four or five months, you could have a whole table of terrain that you could play for different periods, different scenarios, or what have you, and really get more out of the miniatures you have. And that's what we're all about, guys. That's what this list is all about, is getting more out of the miniatures you got. Let me know if I left off some things. I I can already hear you guys talking about 3D printers, and I can hear you guys uh, mentioning other things like PDFs. And I thought about that stuff, but, you know, I'll, let, I'll leave some of that to your own imagination. This was just my top 10. Take care and God bless. Mm-hmm.